Hello and welcome to Transforming with Carol. My name is Carol. I'm a transformational speaker, writer, blogger, and movable optimist, serial entrepreneur, and I'm here to help you become the best version of yourself in your personal life as well as your business. Today, we are talking wealth creation and your mind. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Transforming with Carol. Today's guest is an amazing woman. She is a wealth creator with your mind. So today we are talking wealth creation mindset. What does it take for you to become rich? A lot of people don't understand that there's a difference between the rich and the wealthy mindset. So today we are talking to Charity Limula. Welcome to the show, Charity. Thank you, Carol. I'm so excited today because we are at a place where everybody wants to understand money. Yeah. So the question I'm going to pose to you before I ask who Charity is, is I want people to understand what is the difference between being rich and being wealthy. Wow, that is something that I have taken so many years to understand myself mm -hmm. and I'm more than happy to explain that. Um, being rich is more of the material prosperity okay. where you have lots of stuff, lots of, lots of cars mm -hmm. and money and, and all that. But wealth is where your soul, your mind and your body are wealthy, meaning they are balanced. Wow, so interesting. So when you can balance what you think, what you have mm -hmm. and what you want to acquire, which is the material itself, it's part of wealth, okay. um, and you have a balance um so to say uh, a will of balance where you know your mind your heart and your soul and a everything. holistic side yes then you are wealthy because when we look at your social part of life like your relationship are they healthy your money you know your bank account is it healthy your um your mind is it a healthy mind then you are wealthy because when you have riches which mm -hmm. is money and your relationships are suffering you're not wealthy because you could be lonely or you could be using money for the wrong things mm. So this makes up charity. I feel like the energy that you're giving me is all about the wealth mindset. Yes, yes. Tell us who is charity and how did you come to being a wealth creator? Well, charity, of course, you know, we, that question, you yes. know, it's so funny who because every time somebody <laughs> asks you, it's like, who are you? I'm God's creation. I'm a co-creator um, with God. And every day I'm developing myself. I'm transforming into the best version of myself. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to call myself a wife, a mother, a daughter, or whatever, because all those things are transforming for me every day. Oh, wow. Yeah. I love that. And, you know, a lot of people don't want to introspect and sit down and find out who they really are. Right. Do you feel that this affects the way that they manifest wealth or the riches? What of do you course. have to say about that? Of course. And I think, you know, a lot of people, um, first of all, they just want to be rich. You know, that's why we had to, you know, find the difference between being rich and being wealthy. You see, money is always there. Money is simply um, a means of exchange. You know, you have something that I want to buy, I give you the money, you give it back to me. But when you're wealthy, you understand why you're buying a certain product or a service. Mm. And you use it for a good purpose, whether it is a car that you're buying, is it to drive your kids to school, is it to move from point A to point B. But if you're buying a car so that everybody can see that you are driving a luxurious car, then that is not going to be very good for you in the long run because everybody else can see all, all that prosperity, all that wealth from the outside, but then within yourself, you're suffering, your soul is suffering. And I always go back, like even the Bible says, you know, when we ask for wealth, God will make sure that your soul prospers too. Mm, mm, mm. Now, hearing you say that, when you talk about thinking for the future, mm -hmm. that for me, I hear the word legacy. Yeah. I think what I would also want to understand is why is it that in desperate times, mm -hmm. I mean, I know we've got people watching us from different places, right. but right now we are in Zambia. Mm -hmm. Zambia is going through some economic, you know, downturns, everything's changing. Yeah. Let's give them some good news. Because everybody is talking about money, money, There's money. No money. There's a bit of desperation. Yes. What good news can we give them? The good news is that whatever situation that we are in is temporal. Everything always evolves. So if you're talking about money or the economy or the recession, the more you talk about it, remember we are creator. That's why I called myself mm. a co-creator. So if we are creating luck, that's what we're going to have. But you, 
some people might argue with that charity mm. in the sense that it's not that they're creating lack it's the economy things are happening how are they creating lack when the situation itself the environment has already posed lack to them remember i said we are co-creators we yeah. are all creators so what has happened now we spoke of it long time ago okay mm. it's like corporate prayer okay when we gather together and pray there's it's more powerful isn't it yeah. so it's the same thing even with our wealth for the country the more we talk about the lack of wealth mm. the and more the it's going, <laughs> yes the more we are going to find ourselves why do we always say that america is is um a, a wealthy yes. and a superpower the land of dreams, land of dreams. Yeah. it's because the people themselves believe that so the more you talk about what you want to see, the more you're going to create it. So if you're talking about the recession, you're talking about whatever it is, there's no money, and that's what you're going to create. You know, you know I always tell people, just try and do it within your own self, okay? The more you say, I don't have money for this, I don't have this, I don't have this, and you complain, the more you're going to see that coming to you. If you can change, and this is why charity begins at home, mm. my name, huh? mm. so you can always start with just your own home. Look at, no matter how bad the economy is, if you change your mindset and you change your thoughts, meaning yeah. you change your thoughts when yeah. you change your mindset, and you start speaking what you want to see, and you start seeing it, sooner or later, the people that you're going to attract in your life will be speaking the same language. Meaning, even those people that have been thinking there's no money, the, the minute they come around you because of that vibration, because of that positivity, they'll start picking up on you. Remember, we always have to be the change. Yeah. You know, it can only take one person to change. You know, Jesus is the only person came on earth and everybody knows that there's Jesus and we follow him. But it's only one person that believed in the goodness of humanity. But if you believe that we're going, to, we're going through a recession and you keep on speaking it, the more it's going to be. So, so money if, sort of follows a spiritual law. It's, it's a not vibration. A, it's not a Christian law. It's not no. a Muslim law. It's not a Buddhist law. It's just a spiritual law. What you give out is what you get back. Correct. Is that what I'm hearing you yes, say? Yes, that's very correct. You know, we need to understand that it's a vibration. Everything that we see, do and feel, whatever, even just you and me, you know, we're first spirits. So if my spirit and your spirit connect, then the physical part will connect. For example, even this interview we're having, it was already created in our spiritual realm. We were thinking about it, we connected, and we found ourselves talking about what we're talking about today. You can actually do that on your own and think about it. How did I end up talking about this with charity? <laughs> you know, there's so many groups that we are in that we're talking about money, we're talking about creating wealth, we're talking about becoming a millionaire, we're talking about how do we help others think the way we want them to think so that we can create an atmosphere yeah. of wealth. I think for me, what, I, I love what you're saying. And I feel that, yeah, as a nation, we need to change our mindset. Correct. A lot of people have gone through bad times and good times. We've, we've been on that path, so we mm -hmm. understand that. But what is it about how, what is it about those people who feel that after the bad time, mm -hmm. they really can't get up? What is it that they were doing then that they're failing to do now? Is it a matter of, you know, that something has shifted in them? What is it about Zambia, you know, anywhere where they're, where they're at, where the energy is not positive, where they've seen the circumstances have changed, mm -hmm. but they're failing to get back to that place where they used to be? What do they have to do? Is it an internal thing? Is it an external thing? Do you reflect back on, you know, your good times, your bad times? Mm. What is it that we can change today to make it a better tomorrow? I think, you see, even as I'm hearing you speak, I'm just thinking, everything always works out for good. Nothing ever stays constant. Mm. This world that we are in changes every season. So when you're seeing a season of luck, always look at the fact you have never been in that season all your life. If it's not you, because you believe that it will always be like that, because there are people who just live a life and think it will always be like this and it will always be like that. Mm. But look at other people around you if you can't do it for yourself. Carol, like for example, that. you know, when I met her four years ago, she was, were you struggling with not knowing who you are, not knowing what you want to do? I have seen a tremendous transformation in the last four or five years that I've known you. Mm. And that's because you choose every day to walk towards that transformation that you yeah. want. And transformation is in every part of our lives. Yes. Our relationship, our money, you know, our goals, whatever it is that we want to transform, it's simply by making that decision within. So you did ask, is it external or internal? Mm. It has to start within. Okay. Yeah. I think for me, even as I hear you speak, I feel this is great that it's happening 
right now we are going through challenging times mm -hmm. because personally and, and i don't know who may relate to it but what i feel is that this is also a lesson in the sense that when you're creating legacy when you are going through certain times we should always be prepared for what comes ahead i like because the word are prepared yeah, because, because there the are people who are not going through what, what, what we are going through are now, going yes. Through. Yeah. So you take that season as a time for planning, yeah. as a time for strategy, yeah. because when you have time when you have money and you have no plan and you don't have a strategy, even if I give you a million dollars today, Kara, and you don't have a plan and you don't have a strategy, you're just going to put it worse. It's so like winning the lotto. Exactly. <laughs> so we should always embrace whatever season that we're going. I'm not saying embrace being poor, or embrace the recession, or embrace corruption, or embrace whatever it is that could be causing this but you could change something within yourself by develop personal exactly development. exactly so you feel that okay how can I make a difference what am I saying to myself to include because whatever I speak it goes out there and when it goes out there and finds the other energies that are speaking what I'm speaking then it creates a bigger so to say it's like the way um, you see the um, when you hear of um, like a mountain exploding or whatever, you yeah, always volcano. hear yeah, yeah. a volcano. That's the word I was looking for. Yeah. It always starts really small, yeah. you know, and then all of a sudden it, ex it explodes. It's the same thing with everything we think about. It's like a bad or negative thought. The minute you entertain that bad or negative thought, the next thing you feel, even your body, you know, starts to feel the tension. The next thing you're feeling sick. The next thing you are in and bed. And the doctor can't find anything wrong with you. Exactly. So even the recession, when we really look at what is going on right now in Zambia, we have money. Where has the money gone? It was already printed. So what do you mean there's no money? It's just the energies and what we are doing with that money. So even the people with the money now, when they hear people talk about not having money, they're also going to hold back and say, look, I can't get into this business because these people are saying there's oh, no money, so I better hold on to my angle. money. That's an interesting then already you've, you've, you've blocked the flow of money and that's why I always talk about the flow. Everything that we do in life has a flow. It's like water. The minute a, a stream yeah. of water is flowing and then you put a stone, yeah. the water will try to look for ways to come yes. out. But through where that stone has been put, the water can't flow. Okay. So it's the same thing with the flow. Of when, when you're speaking about the flow, you're speaking about water and how easily things, um, you know, just go it, it mm. brings me back to you know something that you've been pushing of late which is environment and yes. decluttering yes. tell me a bit more about that how does that affect you Ooh. know because i hear of prosperity yes. corners, i hear of you know the things that you put the mm. sense in your home mm. how does that help us to manifest wealth one thing i'm going to put out there is that to begin with you start with your relationship with god because everything starts with the creator so if you can't have that connection upwards yeah you know if that is already blocked it will be very difficult for you to follow through with the rest of the things so one number one have that connection with god okay. whatever religion that you have we all know that one way or another you know that there's something bigger yeah. okay so once you can have that clear thought and i think i talk about this in terms of have your frequency for example kara has a phone number if i need to dial and talk to Kara, I'm going to dial your number and I'm sure that I'm going to get Carol. So if you're talking to God, be sure that mm, he's going to pick up certain. your call. Be, be certain. certain. Don't doubt that he's going to. So if you're asking God for something, be certain that he's going to hear you. The second thing is about the mindset. And that's what we're talking about. Yes. The actions, the thoughts. Yes. The yeah. thoughts that you're telling yourself. If you're telling yourself, um, I can't do anything. I don't have a car, so I can't go anywhere. You're going to sit at home, meaning no action. In order for you to have what you want, you need to act. But in order for you to act, it's your thoughts that will determine your actions. So you have to watch what your, action, what your thoughts are so that your actions are also positive and productive. I love that. The last thing will be now what you want us to talk about, which is the environment. Yes. Sometimes you can have a good relationship with God. Yeah. You're thinking the right thoughts and yeah. you're doing what you need to do. But then there's some outside influences. Yeah. And it's better to begin with where you live. They say um, uh, cleanliness is next to godliness. Yes. So simple things like decluttering your area. Start with your own bedroom where you sleep. You know, if you're sleeping and you have a lot, even if you have good projects, you have good ideas, but on your bed, there's books, there's clothes under your bed. You can find gadgets. all sorts of things, <laughs> gadgets. You know, I talk about, you know, yeah. um, cleaning your bedroom and making sure you don't have a TV. You don't yeah. have even your cell phone in your TV yeah. because those are electromagnets that 
bring you energy that you don't need when you need to sleep mm. because if you go to sleep you should sleep and rest and it, it makes sense because sometimes you feel that a call is about yes. to come and you're wondering how yes mm. because other calls no matter whether you're you're on the phone or not the electromagnets are still working so it's better that the phone is out even if you switch it off mm. so other than your bedroom decluttering your whole house you know, make sure that your living room is inviting. When people come to your place, they should feel welcome. Even the way you sit in your office, what direction are you facing? You mm. talked about what yes. direction. Sometimes I just learned my office has a wall right in front of my desk. What am I saying? Mm. I'm blocking, blocking out. what I, yes. Yeah. But if I can sit where I can see, I have a doorway coming and then I can see, that means I'm also seeing opportunities. My mind, my body, my spirit is open to different opportunities. So it's a lot of things that might be mundane or they might look like they're for other cultures, but they affect the way we live, the way we bring in prosperity into our home and let alone into the offices. So if you want to have, um, if you can bring in the right energy into your home, like you say, the sense, yes. when you walk into a house and, and smell some, Mm. some cookies baking yeah. how do you feel i feel homely. yeah homely yes <laughs> so it's the same thing even about your house if there's that freshness yes even the energy of money the energy of good ideas will come to you when you go to sleep you sleep in a clean home you know a lot of people have always told me why are you always picking up but you're going to sleep i'm like look i'm going to rest yeah so if i'm going to rest i don't want to wake up in a chaos and unrest yourself exactly okay so cleaning your environment even the outside don't just leave it for the inside your kitchen your bedroom and your house go as far as outside nature is very good you know a lot of us these days we live in the concrete jungle yeah you know we want cement everywhere you don't even know the last time you were ever talking to a flower or you know stepping your foot in the grass you know yes. those are some of the things that will help your environment i mean the environment the nature actually helps you to bring in wealth i love that i i think for me um what i'm hearing really is it's a matter of a decision. It's yeah. waking up to actually make a deliberate decision so that your environment depicts the future that you want. Yes. And before we close off, mm. I would love to really know what do you think is the biggest thing that a lot of Zambians, a lot of Africans need to change? Because we pick up a lot of habits from yeah. different cultures. Mm -hmm. But what is the one thing that you want people to know, regardless of whether they're going through a recession or not, what is the one wealth factor that you'd want them to know right now? They have the power to change mm. things around. It's within us. Each one of us has the responsibility to change the environment that we're in Taking right ownership. Now. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much, Charity. That has been very enlightening. I hope that today's episode has helped somebody out there. Please find Charity on Facebook. It's Charity Limula. And I'm Karo Mushota at Karo Mushota TT. Until the next episode, it's goodbye.